Hello guys, hopefully you guys are doing well. And um, I've debated whether I want to make this video or not. But I figure I'll make a quick video and share what has been my obsession lately. As I Star Citizen, especially when the servers are not... You know, when the CIG swaps out their servers with potatoes and the servers are not that, you know... They don't work that good, let's just say that. And um, they lack quite a bit. I've been putting in some hours with a few buddies of mine into Satisfactory because sometimes you just want to get off work, come home and uh, work more by building a factory in game instead. Um, but what Satisfactory is, if you don't know, it is basically, you know, a factory building game. You start with basic resources. You're basically sent here by a big space corporation to exploit the planet for its resources. Send resources back using a giant space elevator that you build. This is a giant space elevator. And as you progress through tiers of the game, the ingredients and the stuff you build get more complex. You start out with just, you know, making making stuff out of copper. Then you get steel, a uh, bunch of other minerals, for example. Here's all the stuff you can get. I mean, you start out with iron ore, copper ore, then you get limestone, then you get coal, sulfur, ethereum ore, rock quartz, crude oil, geyser which is you know with water bauxite water actual water nitrogen gas and uranium once you get stuff once you start getting stuff with uranium you are basically what can be considered an end game so let me show you really quick my spaghetti this server probably has i believe over 250 hours put in um, that was our first playthrough um, to progress from tier 0, tier 1 to tier 8 and complete all the requirements. Took us about 250 hours figuring out what are we doing and what to do. Um, so this is... Um, it can be quite overwhelming. I mean, it's easy kind of right now because I know where everything is and different people... What we ended up do we would end up doing we would kind of work with shifts because we work different, you know, we would have different work schedules. So sometimes we would play together. Sometimes we would play where I would play. I would build stuff and I would tell my buddy what else needs to build, and then he would get on. He would build stuff and tell me what else needs to do. But you know, we have different styles of building. You know. Some are organized chaos, some are organized, organized, but still kind of chaos. It's general chaos, and where it's known in satisfactory world as spaghetti. If you don't um, build in foundations and you don't organize stuff correctly, or rather, there is there is really no wrong way to play. It's whatever you enjoy. Um, this is, was a first, our first playthrough. We didn't know what's going to come in the next year or what we might need. So our original base, when I put down, we this is the original hab that kind of dro gets dropped from space for you. So this was our original where I guess we started playing the game. We had some, for example, this would be this would be the miner that mines iron, gets processed, sends the ore to the smelter, and from smelter you have a constructor. And for example, you can go in a constructor, and t and right now it's making iron ingots. You can go and select different recipe, and depending on recipe, you will need different ingredients to be inputted. Right now we are making iron and iron ingots are going into the constructor and constructor is making iron rods. 
So, um, it's uh, really, without making this video too long, it's quite a process. Um, this is my buddy, you know, we made a great decision of putting a bunch of uranium processing as far as two nuclear reactors or nuclear plants and then making and stacking a bunch of uranium here and as you can see I'm wearing a hazmat suit and on the bottom left of the screen is how many fil radiation filters I have and you can see how quickly that starts to go down once I go up to what I call the uranium hotel look how quickly that starts to go down I mean that filter I mean, this thing is full of uranium, and this filter starts going up super quick. Um, you need a couple of inputs. I mean, for example, this is an assembler, more of a complex um, constructor kind of, which you get in later game. And for example, I'm feed we are feeding it electromagnetic control rods. We feed feeding it in case industrial beams, and uranium cells but it's making our uranium fuel rod and obviously you would have to set up assemblies for uranium cells in case industrial beams and electromagnetic rods so a lot of that stuff we have automated like for example this thing a blender which is kind of has to do more with liquids and i mean for example input for here Uranium, concrete, and sulfuric acid is making encased uranium cells and producing also different concentration of the sulfuric acid. So if the storage tank, for example, gets full here, the blender will um, stop. So in, case, so in that case, we are taking the sulfuric acid, pumping it into another blender that can use that concentration of sulfuric acid and we are reusing nuclear waste and we are making that fissile uranium because that way that can be processed in a particle accelerator and we can make plutonium pellets they are then used to make um oh i forget the name it's been a while basically the plutonium pellets can get made and we produce plutonium fuel rod we can, which can be also used as fuel. Or in this case, we feed it to what it's called like an awesome sink. And basically that is used for how it sounds. If you have excess resources and end game, you can feed it to the awesome sink and the awesome sink will produce coupons depending on how many resources you feed it. And the coupons here, yeah, how, how you like this, my genius building style when I needed to run a bunch of stuff. And the awesome sink will give you a bunch of stuff that especially in the early game will help you out quite a bit. So here's our awesome sink, awesome shop rather, that you can use for coupons. And a lot of the stuff we have unlocked, but you can purchase different lighting, blueprints, you still gotta build them, um, different connections for hyper tubes, Different, I mean, basically, you can purchase everything from functional, um, functional blueprints to more cust customization options. You can purchase some trophies and a boombox that you're hearing now. If you just have a bunch of stuff, you know, if you have nothing better to do, you can, if you finish the game, you get an employee of the planet cup. And you can sit, drink your coffee, and look at your spaghetti that you have created. Um, well, what would be kind of neat? Oh, yeah. The maps are absolutely beautiful. I mean, you have um, these creatures are just kind of hanging around, flying, and just kind of not bothering you. Like, this dude just likes to hang out, and you have to shoo it away sometimes, but he is harmless. There are some um, creatures that will hurt you. In that case, let's get out of this radiation radiation zone here so we can observe. But for example, here's a bunch of assemblers that we use for the end game stuff. Right now, a lot of it is full and not working. 
just because we kind of processed everything and we are going to delete a bunch of stuff and retool for the next update or just kind of get rid of a bunch of stuff that we don't know no longer have to make but you have to set up assemblies for example to, get, to give you another example so right here we are feeding screws which you make a ton of screws we are feeding we are feeding um iron plates into the assembler and it's making reinforced iron plates that in turn reinforced iron plates and we are feeding it iron rods into another assembler and that is making modular frames and that in turn modular frames and steel beams that we are also manufacturing and as you can see is being piped up piped in all the way from back there and that way the steel beams and the modular frames are being turned to to into versatile framework which is basically an end game resource that you need to then send over here see right now they're being sent they're being sent all the way out here together with iron rods and those are uh, this is basically a conveyor splitter those are being fed into here and versatile frameworks electromagnetics control rods and batteries are making magnetic field generators which um is one of the things and i think you need to make what was the goal like 2000 of them um you need to make 2000 of them um as one of the requirements to send in a space elevator to complete to complete that tier of the game and the same thing you set up a different manufacturing to manufacture batteries like see this blender is manufacturing batteries out of sulfuric acid aluminum solution and aluminum casing and that in turn needs to set up production for that so for example this refinery is taking sulfur taking water and making sulfuric acid as one of the ingredients for batteries um i don't want to drone on too much unless you guys like it um i could kind of you know either explain it in more detail i just don't want to dwell too much on it um because it can be kind of overwhelming i mean look at it this way my buddy built this which is awesome um the miners are all the way there they're mining copper then it's being fed into storage tanks in case we have overflow and and then that copper goes into all these smelters to making copper ingots and oh look at how much ore there is and all these copper ingots from all these smelters are going into this giant storage tank the storage containers rather and from here they're being separated into different construct constructors and those constructors are either making copper sheets they can be making copper wire i mean they're fed like for example these are making copper wire they're in turn set up to be making cable from copper wire so you need a huge chain of stuff in order to be um to produce a lot of the end game here stuff um you can there's a different transportation options to move resources obviously you can you can build um conveyor belts you can build pipes to transport stuff if it's really inaccessible or far away you can also have drones that you can build um like right now it's unloading no dr no drone yes there is drone it's just being it's just being a little sometimes it gets bugged out if it's waiting a long time to unload and load it's unloading right now it's all all that stuff being fed into one of our awesome sinks and obviously there is also trains that go and unload a bunch of stuff as well actually there's a train getting ready to leave right now here and that train will actually travel all the way to a, i mean that's map is really extensive and it's actually really beautiful um yeah you can you can have vehicles too 
Oh, nope, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I just wanted to see the status of this platform here. Why is it not popping up? Come on. Sometimes it's tricky. You can see the timetable, you can see what the train is doing. Um, but here, let me show you something else. So, for example, we have a train going here. And right now I'm using a chat pack. Um, a hover pack, rather. And it will work anywhere. See all these power lines? It will work anywhere that there is a power lines. So, let me show you something here. This is cool. So, for example, one of the assemblies... Oh, yeah, it's just... This, this was all built. We put a lot of hours into it, kind of figuring stuff out. Like, for example, this is a giant... Oh, this is a good example. Oh, uh, no. Give me a power line to hook into. There we go. So, for example, you have... Right now, we are taking sulfur. We are taking coal. And we are making black powder. Black powder in turn goes into these are all by the way almost you could call them diesel generators um i mean that's what we call them but fuel generators and it can work with different kind of fuel right now we have excess of turbo fuel so we are using it to power we don't really need to because our power production is pretty good but we gotta burn off the fuel anyway so for example so black powder is going it's getting split into two, um, just because to accommodate the volume, into two refineries. Refineries are taken in, for example, right now it's heavy oil residue, which is a byproduct of making plastic and such. So heavy oil residue and black powder is going into a refinery and it's making smokeless powder. And smokeless powder can be used for um, stuff like creating explosives to clear rocks um and other and it can even be used for certain types of ammo i believe maybe not but right now we just had you know a lot of capa excess capacity so right now we are just piping all that into storage um and we uh, have we have a lot of smokeless powder we might do with something with it in the future in the future updates but for right now, we are just storing it. Oh, there was a train arriving here for steel production. One of the trains we got going. So right now, the train will pull up. And the little crane will go and unload the container. Which is actually really cool. It will dump it into here, which is an unloading platform. And as you can see, as it unloads, the resources will start pour, pour, getting on this conveyor and going into the assemblies. Say, there you go. There's the steel ingots. I got unloaded. They're going. And the train is going for a next load. And the steel ingots are going into here. They're going to go in storage containers. And then distributed, distributed on a conveyor, two different assemblers, and we had uh, we basically just use this now to make steel beams that you know jet fuel cannot melt, and those steel beams are then piped through all the way into here to the storage, and all the way to those assemblers that are making the um the framework for the end game items so all the way from here all the way back there and one of the cool ways i'll show you one one last thing here one of the cool ways you can also get around quicker is hyper tubes which is kind of neat i mean we did a lot of work as far as building through the map figuring stuff out and now actually with the new update you are able to blow these poisonous, we call them termite hills. 
these these things up and clear the gas. Um, let's see. So here's our different hyper tubes. Oh, this is a new one here, Bill. That's cool. But for example, which one we want to take? Uh, let's take this one, which will be tricky. Why do you build them like this? There you go. So to give you an example, so now we are going in this hyper tube here. And I believe this is going to take us to our crude oil production. Just to get, I mean, the map though is gorgeous. This is actually a good way to see the map too. Um, the team at Coffee Stain Studios did a phenomenal job with their environment. The new maps, um, there's four total, and there are different biomes. See, this is kind of more of a, these are water generator extractors. Um, this is more kind of balanced maps. Some maps have way more water, their beach, the resources are harder. So as far as for this kind of a beginner map, where the resources spaced out kind of balanced. Um, the new playthrough, because the update eight is getting ready to come out, so we might not start the new playthrough, but we will probably want to explore the new map. But even on this map, look at the different, I want to call them biomes or different areas really here. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's handcrafted maps. It's pretty cool. It's not procedurally, generated so your map that you're gonna play on and the map that i'm gonna be playing on these are scanners basically is gonna be the same so if your body found something on the map he can tell you where to go and you can join other people's games as well if you if they invite you so that train is going all the way here and picking that stuff up And those are the example of the hostile creatures. Some of them will melee you, some of them will shoot like plasma at you, stuff like that. So we built all these hyper tubes and all these oil extractors all the way here. That's a, uh, that, that took a, a lot of work. So right now, see all this oil that we have, a lot of this oil that we have is basically being produced here. And all those resources for still whatever, all, all that stuff is coming from these extractors all the way, all the way from this corner of the map, all the way, all the way back from, we are right here and our main base is all the way here. And we have stuff set up all over the map. We haven't explored a lot of coastal much just because we haven't needed to, but it is definitely, it is definitely extensive. Here, let's get back. Oh, come on, go. What is wrong with you? Go, is it not letting me in? That's right. Oh, let's see what you did. This should let me in here. Yep. Um, so you can see the space elevator from all the way here. But it literally, you send stuff into space. So it's been... Um, um, I can show you more of the map. This is one of the big creatures that, if you are not prepared, will kick your butt. Um, there are usually there are space wrecks. That you extract valuable resources from, especially earlier earlier in the game. Um, that's a beautiful game. It's uh, if you enjoy. There's some math involved. You have to cal kind of calibrate, like your inputs. For example, if the assembler requires, let's say, thirty wire a minute, and you are feeding at twenty, obviously the production will be slow. But if you are producing fifty, and you're feeding it. 50 and it only wants 30 you're wasting all that production as well so there is a certain satisfaction of balancing your factories and making everything tuned where everything's just kind of calibrated to 
the way and it comes along and kind of calibrated the way you want it. I mean, look how beautiful some of this is. And we ran those pipes and power all the way there. Um, so there's certain, I mean, it's not for everybody. Not everybody enjoys that. Um, I just kind of find it very soothing on uh, days that I can just look on and play a little bit. I'm like, okay, today I'm not going to do anything complicated. I'm just going to build a lot of foundations or I'm going to run this pipeline here and that's it. It's fine, but it's measurable progress. It's, uh, what you might say, satisfactory. No pun intended. Um, but it's our first playthrough. We have over 250 hours on this server. And I just absolutely love our beautiful spaghetti mess that we call our first factory. Um, there were some setbacks. I died, had to go recover my gear and all that. Um, we learned. I will tell you one thing. It is definitely satisfying when you figure stuff out and get a new assembly going it's 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 it, it can be pretty cool it can be it can be very cool uh let's see oh there there was my boom and there's my boom box kind of good tune but um but yeah this is just a quick overview. There are some light towers you can build. Um, I know it's kind of a lot. I don't want to go into a lot of detail in case you guys are not interested. I just wanted to share a little bit of a side project we have been kind of working on just to pass the time and just, and just kind of on the days where you just want to really don't want to get involved in setting something on for Star Citizen or the service not working or you just want to get on and be like oh I'm, j I'm I'm gonna build this assembly line today and then he can take my buddy can take it from there and whatnot it's kind of cool it's um uh, I don't know something you can play fairly passively you can watch a movie relax build some conveyor belts it's pretty cool it's beautiful looking game and I'm really we have really been enjoying it all right guys hopefully you guys are having a good week and um I will see you in the next one hopefully you enjoyed it take care